Hi guys, and welcome to the workshop again. Uh, most of the time uh, here, I talk about going faster on our bikes, but today I really want to focus on braking and stopping faster. So why do I expect these brakes to come to high-end bikes like mine? And why am I really looking forward to them? Well, the first reason and the most obvious one is the braking and the control itself. Now most of you would argue that the braking you get from rim brakes is pretty much spot on and adequate for a road bike. Uh, with which I agree to an extent, because if you start riding in wet and poor conditions, it's really really not what you want, even in the best carbon rims. Now, in the beginning of the season I raced a super wet uh, Criterium race and Slovakia ring in pouring rain and I was on a 4 fire for NSWs which have the same braking surface as these 808 NSWs and I have to say braking in the dry on these wheels is extremely good if you pair them with the right pads and brakes of course but still I found them uh, to be quite disappointing in the wet even though these are market leader carbon clinchers <clears throat> and just a couple of days ago when I was out training I ran into a huge uh, rainstorm and the rain was coming down so hard that actually it hurt uh, through my skin so I really really needed to stop for shelter and I got near a bus stop and I was on a slightly uphill road traveling around let's say 30 k per hour <clears throat> not very fast by any means and I decided to stop for that bus stop well the rain was coming down so hard that I got basically aquaplaning on, on my brakes and even though I had both my brake levers fully logged in nothing really happened it took me around well, 100, 150 meters to really stop from 30 k's per hour, and that's that's just uh, horrible. Imagine if you if I was going down an alpine descent, and the rain like that hit me. Well, I would probably be dead by now because the only way I could have stopped was if I hit a tree or something, and that's not really pleasant. And of course. If you ride in slippery conditions, bit of off-roading, gravel riding, really popular now, you really want to have these brakes, otherwise you're not going to have too much control uh, over your riding. And I say that because I've raced motocross for the last 13 years, and there it really applies. You don't really need all that braking power when the things get slippery and out of control, but you really, really need uh, good control modulation and that's when you can really really stop faster and be more efficient so yeah that's the number one reason uh, the other reasons come mainly from the fact that you remove the braking surface from the rim because what that creates uh, well first of all for me uh, which would probably be the best thing is that by having a carbon clincher with a disc brake you really have no reason to think about tubulars anymore and you can get rid of them altogether which for me is a great thing because well I have been running tubulars for most of my road cycling and I switched to clinchers, carbon clinchers this year and I don't really want to look back I still have this one tubular wheel set and the fact that it offers no real performance or comfort advantages and it takes a day to change the tire properly makes it really uh, unsuitable for riding for, I think in 2017 but the only uh, advantage you get is the safety in this sense because it's really hard to get a brake hit failure from a tubular rim due to the construction but since you are creating no heat itself on the rim 
when you're this, on a disc brake bike, you're completely safe, even a carbon clincher or a tubeless setup. So that's the number one thing for me. Uh, the number two thing uh, follows up on that. If you create a disc specific rim, then it can be much more aerodynamically efficient because it doesn't need to have a proper brake track, it can be lighter and faster as well. So that's another reason. Third reason would be uh, durability. Of course you are with disc brake you are not wearing your expensive carbon rim and you can use it all year long with no damage because the only thing you are going to need to change are some brake pads or in extreme cases a brake roller. Uh, then one more thing which really annoys me with this wheel set in particular uh, is the adjustment. You see I have well I have only two wheel sets and a disc right now but I expect two more to arrive in the coming weeks and unfortunately all of those have different brake track widths. So that means every time I change a wheel I need to readjust my brakes which is not really a big deal on standard brakes but on integrated brakes like this one or these on a speed concept well it's really not ideal whereas with this brake setup you just slap in the different wheel set no matter the rim design or shape or whatever width and you have perfect braking every time another thing that comes or sprouts from this again this particular wheel set 303's I can adjust my brakes to have a good bite point at the rear and tons of brake rub when sprinting or I can adjust them like this so I get really poor braking as you can see it does nothing happens up until basically this point and you get proper braking at this point not ideal but this way you have no brake rub so again you don't have to choose the disc brake at least to do a compromise in this aspect you can have no brake rub and perfect braking every time in every condition and finally I think a great feature of disc brakes it has been on the mountain bikes for a while are through axles now again with through axles you don't have to worry about uh, wearing out your fork or your frame dropouts by constantly changing your wheels I think it's even faster or they can be made just as fast as quick releases if you know what you're doing you can change them pretty much <clears throat> just as fast so that's uh, really really not an issue and your frame and fork gets stiffer as well and you get perfect alignment every single time so I think uh, not just from the brake performance standpoint that's really not that important but these I have mentioned just earlier the compatibility the lack of adjustment and all these things they really make the whole system more convenient and more 21st century in my mind and if you look at this or these two highly integrated bikes even though uh, the brake cables here are properly shielded from the debris you are still going to have to change them at some point whereas with hydraulic disc brakes you can have electronic shifting hydraulic braking and don't have a single tape uh, cable on your bike which is well another simplification of maintenance because if you need to bleed the hydraulic brake you just do it you don't have to take the whole front end apart or route new brake hoses or anything as with internal and outer, outer cables where basically every time you need to change that it takes a whole day so yeah that's uh, another advantage in my mind so overall a lot less maintenance 
much less wear on your rims, safer, uh, more powerful braking, better control, and a couple of other nice side effects as well, probably more speed. Well, the obvious downside will be the weight, but I think in the coming generation of bikes that's uh, going to be addressed by the manufacturers, so by optimizing their frames and brake designs, they will come down to basically the level of rim brakes. From the sa safety standpoint, I don't think that these brakes are a valid excuse for safety reasons. I have raced motocross, as I've said, pretty, uh, pretty much every race has some kind of crash or incident involving one or two riders or a big pile up at the start. I haven't heard anyone ever to be injured uh, by disc brake in any of these scenarios, so that's just not a valid point. In terms of aerodynamics, I think the new Servolo or other TT bikes prove that uh, disc brakes can be made more aero than rim brakes. They can be integrated a bit nicer, or the Parley, for example. And I think TT bikes should also have disc brakes because, well, they're even faster than a road bike. They need even more braking. I think think it makes a lot of sense. So I'm definitely a fan and I really can't wait for Trek or someone else to release two bikes at this level and in this category to have disc brakes. Okay, so this was pretty much my opinion about disc brakes summarized in some points. Uh, but I'm pretty sure there will be someone who doesn't agree. If you don't, then of course you can leave a comment down below. And if you'd like to know more about my bikes, and some uh, tech related stuff and tips how to make your bike faster then don't forget to tune into my channel and subscribe it's all for today thanks for watching and see you next time